The story of Central Park begins with the passage of the bond initiative um, a few years back. And when we were deciding what to do best with our facilities in town, um, we really had to make a decision about whether we we're going to extend the life of Carpenter or we we're going to extend the life of East Lawn as well too. After a lot of deep work with our architects, we decided that it would really be cost efficient for us to end the life of those buildings and to bring a new building on board. After surveying our facilities, we found that we could utilize the old Central Middle School, um, Central High School as well too, and refurbish it into a modern elementary. Um, the idea to theme it as a STEM elementary really came from a lot of the macro and micro initiatives that were happening in the nation, the state, and the region, and also in our town. We know that Midland exemplifies the STEM subjects, and we wanted to make sure that we could harness uh, that enthusiasm and also prepare our young students in those fields. So we decided to make not just a normal elementary, but to create a STEM elementary. And the idea more from a napkin to the building that you're gonna see highlighted um, throughout this video. So the first part of the design process for us was to really figure out what we wanted our core curriculum to be. We vetted national curriculum and we decided that we were going to focus on the Project Lead the Way launch curriculum. And the Project Lead the Way launch curriculum focuses on three themes. It focuses on the principles of engineering, computer sciences, and also the biomedical sciences as well too. Once we figured out the curriculum that we wanted to focus on, the fun part began for us, which was to design a building that could help us facilitate that curriculum. And so the building really has two different design features to it. One, it allows us to be able to implement the curriculum with fidelity. We wanted to design a flexible space where all of the experimentation could be done and a space where it was movable and mobile um, so kids were able to thrive within the pillars of the curriculum. The second thing that we wanted to do was we really wanted to add features in the building that help pique the curiosity of students in STEM. So throughout the highlights of this video, you're gonna see that we have numerous design features in this building that focus on the different areas of STEM that really are designed to pique kids' curiosities and really promote them into cycles of inquiry. We have design features that rotate all the way from wind turbines to zip lines to windows into heating units and ventilators and also visible drain pipes as well that allow kids to know that the entire building promotes the different pillars of STEM. You'll also notice too that the building has a very industrial feel. That's because we wanted students to be able to see really the nuts and bolts of what makes a building work. And we feel that each of these different design features will help promote curiosity amongst students in all of the STEM subjects. Because we knew that Central Park was going to be a big building, it houses over 800 kids currently, we wanted to make sure that the building um, was able to promote um, learning communities amongst our students so they didn't feel like they were going to get lost in the numbers. So a main design feature that we developed was what we call learning communities. So each grade level has its own learning community and these are very innovative learning communities. They are all anchored by what we call STEM studios and maker spaces and each classroom has the ability to open up into that STEM studio or maker space. The maker spaces feature custom designs. They have polished concrete floors with drains in them, which are intended for when students make messes that they're easy to clean up. They have mobile and flexible furniture, and they also have pull down power so we can bring the power to the kids when they're doing their different experiments. Each of our learning studios, each of our learning communities is also anchored by a STEM outdoor learning space. We have three outdoor learning spaces, one that anchors K-1, one that anchors 2-3, and one that anchors 4 and 5. Those outdoor learning spaces have equipment that immerses the students and highlights the curriculum that they're learning in those levels. For example, in K-1, through one, there's a unit called the Sun, the Moon, and the Stars, and you'll see highlighted out in the outdoor learning space that we have a planetarium, we have planets that the kids can play on. We're trying to promote hands-on inquiry-based learning where students really aren't in the old traditional sit and get mode. Another thing that we're really excited about are features throughout the building that are immersing kids in mathematics even when they don't know it. When they're in our gymnasium, they will see formulas on the floors. When they are in our hallways, as they're going down the hallways, they'll see that there are sequences highlighted such as the Fibonacci sequence. We have number lines. We have equations that also correlate to the curriculum as well too. And everywhere that a kid turns, they're going to be exposed to the different spaces um, or different themes of STEM. 
You'll see behind me one of the features of the building is our living wall, and the living wall highlights some of our units in the sciences where we're focusing on the plant cycle, the cycle of the seed, etc. And so as students walk through the building, they will be exposed to these different type of simulations of science. It is something that really promotes full immersion and inquiry-based learning. We've also put a lot of work into transforming our media center to really make it a modern learning center and also to promote personalized education. As you see tours of the media center, you'll see that our furniture is completely flexible, it's mobile, it's modern, and it's able to be customized for us to provide spaces that the teachers need. We have small group spaces that will allow us to do interventions and enhancements for students, and we also have comfortable spaces so kids that need to get away to do a little bit of individual work and reading time can do that as well too. It is not your traditional be quiet shh, media center that you're used to. It really is intended to be an engaging learning environment that is an extension of our teachers' classrooms.